All right, hey guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about Zwift. Uh, I've had Zwift for about two months or so now. So I'm gonna be talking about the pros and the cons, uh, who it's suitable for and whether or not you should buy it. So with that said, uh, I'm gonna be doing a recovery ride today. So let's just hop into a ride and get it started. Okay, so I'm just gonna be talking about the pros first. Um, and by the way, the route that I'm riding today is about TikTok. It's part of the world of Utopia. And it's about 19 kilometers long, uh, minimal elevation, so that's great because we're doing a, all we want is a uh, recovery run today. So let's just talk about the pros. So firstly, I think uh, the biggest benefit of using Zip instead of riding outside is the convenience of it, and you're able to uh, get a good ride, get a good workout in, without having to uh, go out and you know sometimes like if you live far away from for example the east coast or some route that you're trying to ride at then you also have to travel there you have to drive there and whatever not so with zip you can literally just pick a map pick a world uh pick a workout or a training difficulty and you can just start your workout straight away from home so that's what i really like uh something else that i really like about this is the convenience the safety because you don't have to worry about traffic, you don't have to worry about uh, traffic lights, you don't have to worry about cars, you don't have to worry about uh, rain and all that stuff. So I think that's also great. And something that's really cool about Zip that I can't actually do outside is the workout. So with the workouts, you can turn on earth mode, which forces you to ride at a certain power at a certain wattage uh, and that's just something that you can't really do outside or you can't really do anywhere because unless you have a power meter which I don't uh, then it's really hard to do something like that so I find those workouts using power very effective and that's what I did to prepare for my triathlon that's also what I do quite often and you know honestly something else that I think a lot of people don't mention enough is how interactive and fun Zip can actually be. Uh, you can actually download a Zip companion app from your phone. So you can actually enter races uh, against real people, or you can go on group rides, uh, you can go on free rides, or you can just explore all the worlds. And they have an infinite amount of worlds. Like, uh, I have no idea how many worlds there are, how many routes there are, but I just know that there's a lot. And it's gonna take you a long time to fully explore the whole world of Zwift. So that's something that I really like. Uh, it's just something different from riding outside because at the end of the day when you're riding outside, most of the time you're riding the same routes, uh, looking at the same things. So it gets a bit boring uh, uh, after a long time. And I think Zwift is just a good change of environment for that. But you can ride in places that in real life, for example, you can go to France, you can go to New York, you can go to London, uh, stuff like that. So I think that's really cool as well, and I really enjoy that interactive part of Zip. You can also chat with real people while sort of riding. You can invite friends or you can raise a friend. Uh, so I think that's really cool. And something else I find really cool about Zip is that uh, you can actually buy bikes or buy equipment. For example, wheels, clothing, uh, shoes, helmet, stuff like that. You can actually buy real world things in the game. Obviously you're not gonna get it in real life, but at least you get to feel like you're actually riding them. And of course, just like outside, you can do everything you want. You can sprint, you can ride slower, you can ride out of your seat. And you can also change gears, just like outside. Okay, so let's talk about the cons. Now, the biggest con is obviously, uh, after all, you are riding in one spot. Uh, you're looking at pretty much the same thing. So if you're doing long rides, it can get a bit boring and mentally straining after, uh, after a while. Especially if you're doing those rides that last two hours, three hours, even up to five or six hours. Um, it can get a bit boring and definitely something that uh, you should take note of if you're someone who enjoys 
riding outside, looking at different sceneries and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and also something else that uh, I don't think a lot of people mention or emphasize enough is that if you're using a wheel on trainer, which is what I'm using, uh, I would recommend getting a trainer wheel, uh, sorry, a trainer tire, a trainer wheel, or a separate bike uh, for Zwift. Because if you use a wheel on trainer, then doing Zwift is gonna ruin your tires very quickly. Especially if you have very expensive racing tires, uh, it's gonna burn through your tires super fast. Okay, so obviously, since you're riding in one spot, like I said, it gets really hot very easily. And I have one fan here, and all my windows are open, which kind of helps with uh, the ventilations and cooling, but honestly, it's not enough. Some people have like two or three fans. So yeah, if you're thinking about doing Zwift, especially if you're doing hard training, intense training, then you really need to uh, take note of the cooling and make sure that you have enough cooling. Because otherwise you're going to be sweating too much, uh, you're going to be losing too much water, and if you're not into that, if you're not into sweating a lot, then this is probably not, then Zwift is probably not for you. Okay, so let's talk about who Zwift is uh, suitable for. Now of course, in my opinion, if you're someone who takes training very seriously, uh, if you're training for triathlon or cycling events, and you just want the convenience of training without the hassle, without the social aspect of riding with your friends, then of course this is great because you can just do it anytime you want and it's a controlled environment so you're gonna get a you're gonna get a super efficient and a very good workout in without all the hassle of having to go out and worry about the external factors. You can squeeze in a workout that's as short as 15 minutes uh, any time of the day without having to worry about external factors. And of course uh, sometimes when I'm riding Zip, I'll be watching YouTube at the same time. Uh, you can also read, you can also study, uh, you can also do some other secondary tasks whilst you're doing Zip. So that's why it's so great. And of course, after you ride, your shower is right there. So it's also super convenient in that sense. Okay, and lastly, uh, let's talk about who Zip is not suitable for. Uh, of course, if you're someone who rides a bike for the social aspect, if you're someone who rides a bike just to hang out with your friends, to chat, they go for those cafe stops, then obviously you're not gonna get that same exact experience when you're doing Zwift. So if that's a huge deal for you, then this is probably not uh, this is probably not the thing for you. But of course, I think the biggest deal breaker is if you don't have very good ventilation at home, then of course, I don't think, or at least I wouldn't recommend you getting Zwift because ventilation and cooling is seriously so important when you're doing indoor riding. And if you don't have sufficient cooling, yeah. Uh, it's just not going to be an enjoyable experience and I think you would be better off riding outside. Okay, so with that said, thanks for watching the video. I'll be coming with a new video soon of me trying to go sub 60 minutes on up to zip. So if that's something that you're interested in, then make sure you stay tuned, uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. So yeah, hopefully this video was somewhat useful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.